Hi, Master Dan Segarra for Tong Sudo TV. Welcome to our first episode. This is the first of many episodes on the martial art of Tong Sudo. It's not about the organizations, it's about the style. So it doesn't matter what organization you belong to, you're going to find a home here and enjoy many interesting segments on your art. And we hope in the future you'll get involved and provide maybe a segment for our show as well. So this week's segment, we're going to have a starting off with Master Matt Becker on form application. Then we're going to follow with Master Josh Trowbridge on grappling and ground fighting. And then Master Don Bazufi on a philosophical story that you could share with your students about our art that connects it to the philosophy of our art. And finally, a segment by yours truly. So, I hope you enjoy this. Let's go to our first segment. Master Matt Becker, take it away, please. Thank you, Master Segura. This is Matt Becker in La Jolla, California, and these are the applications of the Pyongan forms. We're going to start with the first section of the first form, Pyongan Idan. This is what it looks like. We've got this opening motion where I'm defending with both hands, and then there's some kind of a strike and another strike here. Let's look at it with a partner. Jordan. So the first application is for a one hook punch, and then the second one is for a two hook punch combo, and then a hook punch and then a straight punch. This is the first one. In the initial motion, he's throwing a hook punch. I defend the hook punch. This is a guard hand, and I'm going to tell you what to do with this hand in the next lesson. From here, I kick him between the legs, his head drops, I hit him in the chin, and then I drive him back with a body shot. One more time. As he punches, I'm defending with my forearm and my elbow. At this point, from my short stance, I deliver a kick to the groin to drop his head. As his head drops, I'm gonna try and meet him with an uppercut on the way in. This drives his head back and exposes his body, where I'm gonna hit him in the body while I move out into a longer stance. That's the first application. And the second one, he does two punches, two hook punches. One, and then two. From here, I kick him to drop his head. Same thing, I uppercut him, and then I drive him back. He punches. I defend the first punch, and my guard hand is ready in case the second punch comes in. A low kick to the groin to drop his head. I meet his jaw, driving him back, and then I body shot him. I want to drive him back with my long stance. One more time. One, two, three, four, five. The next one's a hook punch and then a straight punch. Let's talk about it. He throws a hook punch and I defend the same way that I would previously. As the straight punch comes in, I'm gonna try and hyperextend his elbow. And if you look at this motion, it looks just like the motion in the form. From here, the low kick, the uppercut, and then the straight punch to the body. One more time. I'm defending on my elbow. Freeze. As here, if his punch is going to come straight, I'm going to meet the punch on his wrist and his elbow this way. I kick him in the groin, I meet his head, and then I drive him back. Those are the three applications. Am I forgetting anything? Yes, the reflexes. At this point in class, we usually do a free-flowing drill with two people where we develop the reflexes and the muscle memory for the techniques. Thank you, Master Segura. This is Matt Becker and Jordan Schultz in La Jolla, California. Tong Su. Great job, Master Becker. Thank you for sharing that with us. The next segment is going to be Master Josh Trowbridge on grappling and ground fighting. Take it away, Master Trowbridge. Thanks, Master Segura. My name is Gary Master Josh Trowbridge. I'm with World Modern Tung Sido Federation here in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, today, we're going to work on our grappling segment. Uh, what we're going to work on today is going to be the upa or bridge and roll from the mouth and we're also going to work on some base drills. So the first basic drill is going to be just a basic step up is what we call it. So this te technique is basically a quick stand. So we're either sitting and we roll, we got knocked to the ground, whatever screen you want to use. Uh, basically the weight's going to go into our front foot and our back hand. Our other hand is going to naturally come in for the guard. <clears throat> this is going to be one of those where possibly we could be in kick, punch. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the weight into the front. We're actually going to let our weight hang. So two points, one and two. Basically after this, we're going to step behind our back hand. Step, 
And basically, we're going to Uba Jasse. So we're going to our back stands. Uh, going back down, maybe it's one of those things we're trying to evasion. So same way going back down, you can work this as a drill. Here, down, in. So as we work with this, up and down. So right now, we're thinking of strikes. So if we're going to think of, we'll use a roundhouse kick for now. Uh, maybe they're uh, driving in after us, and we just have to stand up so he moves in. I want to be here. So now I can actually defend. So this is going to go into some of our other techniques as we go through, but it's a quick evasion. Uh, we know we're going to get hit. So this is one of those, we know they're coming in, we know they're going to, we're, we're too late. So as he moves in, quick stand, hit. I'm going to counter attack, however we want to counter attack. So I can go into takedowns, go into strikes, however we want to work this. Uh, this technique also works from the ground when we do jujitsu. A lot of times you'll see sparks if you work out with these. Okay. So usually you'll see us, in, whether it's the Gracie Jiu Jitsu or, or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, our usual start is instead of our bow, we still bow, we're usually our handshake is. But say we're actually in a real life competition, you have a lot of wrestlers. So there's going to be a lot of people pressuring. So as we go in here, as we actually work, this same base, so you can actually see the base points here, hook behind the head, we're actually going to do up. Uh, so now I can either use strikes, I can go into some of our techniques, which we'll get into later segments for this one. Um, but that's going to be our, our basic platform. So as we go through, again, that's our, our basic stand-up. We have a lot of different variations of what we do. Uh, but this is going to be our main one that we're going to show within this segment. Uh, so again, for students, this is a no matter if it's white, black, masters, this is one that works for everybody. And you can get creative with it. So this is why I like teaching this one so much. So again, just real quick, our basic attack stand-up is what we're going to base this off of. Guard, just want this here. Basic hang, hit, up, down, and scoop. So I should have them warm up or I'll do drills of 10 to 15 each side back and forth. Uh, and so that's our our basic uh, getaways. That's going to be our evasion tactics. So this is everything within what we want to teach with the Jiu Jitsu. What everybody keep in mind is we don't want to stand on guard. So especially with Tung Sudo, if you don't have the experience on the ground, you're not going to try, try to stay in and roll with somebody and fight somebody on the ground that has a lot more experience than you. So this is our basic way to create space, get up, either go back to our striking, or to run. So obviously with all self-defense, we want to create space and get out. So this is the perfect way to do that. Uh, our second one is going to be our UPA, or our bridge and roll. First, we're going to start with the drill again. So how I teach the Jiu-Jitsu seg uh, segments in class, the requirements, our seminars, is everything is drill-based. So what I do is I start with the uh, solo drill to work to a partner drill. So this basic UPA, or bridge and roll, is I'm going to think of, if I'm going to roll my attacker to my right, I'm going to bridge my hips high up as I can, and I'm going to end up on the notch of my shoulder, my right shoulder. My left hand is actually going to touch back at 45. So if I actually up and roll, I'm going to reach, then I can come back down. Then I'm going to go to the other side. Up, reach, back down. So and then it, right now you're going to work solo. Each one's going to be a separate count. One, one. So it would be touch, stop. Touch, stop. As they get more advanced, as you get more comfortable, you can work a fake or a double switch. So one, two. So one, two. And that hand that's reaching, you'll see in a minute, is actually helping to guide our attacker. So that's the reason we use the hand, so you're establishing muscle memory within this one. Uh, but that's the basic solo drill as we go through. When we switch to partners, our basic UPA, and this is going to be a generic platform. So when you look at it, you can't look on somebody being stationary and go, oh, I can do this, 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 and this, this, and this. Everything's adaptable. We have a lot of different versions. This is a basic way 
for understanding how to create control, how to create distance. <clears throat> so as they actually start out in the model, right now you have to remember an untrained attacker. So an untrained attacker, in their mind, this is control. They're holding us to the ground. We really don't care. In real life, I mean, we have strength. But when I want transition, maybe this guy's 250, 300 pounds, that's a lot of damage if he hits me. My head has nowhere to go. So I want to try to create space and I want to get a better position as quick as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the same size, if I'm going to go to the right, I'm going to attack the right side. I'm going to show on both sides. I'm going to roll to my left, but I want to show you first to my right so you can see from camera angle. Whatever side I go to, I'm going to trap. And it doesn't matter even if I slide up and I catch it on the foot, slide up here, really doesn't matter. So if you, if you don't get it, it's not the end of the world. Um, depends on their size as well. I'm taller than he is, but generally they're going to be a lot bigger than you are, so it's not going to be as much of a problem. Um, so I trap the right leg for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide under, so I'm going to catch and catch. What this is doing is now he can't reach his hand over to stop. If, if I'm here and I move, He's going to stop my roll. If I trap, he can't. The reason I want to catch the elbow, too, and it's not a push, what I'm actually doing is I'm relaxing down. Because if I'm here, and, and once you're training jiu you can actually learn how to use your elbow so that I roll, you can stop with your elbow to create counter space to come back up. So we're going to eliminate everything. So we're going to use this kind of trap. The other foot's just going to slide in wherever it's comfortable. And then we're going to create that big roll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it on this side so you can see the actual roll and how we move. But the biggest part is my hips have to go up first and then roll into my shoulder. So I'm going to reach through, grab, hook, catch, hips up. And his head's already past mine so he really can't stop anymore. Knee, knee. And to show how my roll of this once I turn, I'm going to use this knee, the, the side I'm going to roll to. So I'm here. I'm going to use my foot and pivot. It's going to roll into my knee. I'm not going to roll like a steamroller. Then I pivot off of that. So I go here. When I'm in this position this way, I'm up, turn, drop, hips. Everything moves separately. Just like when we do our kicking, everything twists and untwists. So again, everything's across. Boom. And him. All right, so when he's back on top. We'll do this one more time. We'll do both sides so you can see both angles. So we'll catch. Boom. Bridge. Up. Roll. And you can see where my knees come to. And as soon as I hit, I want to slide in. And I want to keep myself low. The lower I am here, the safer I am from strikes. He can hit me in the head. There's nothing real dev devastating. He doesn't have any chamber or follow through with it. So when I'm down, for him to hit, it's pretty minor. I might get a bump or bruise. I'm not worried at that point. And uh, as we get into other segments, we're going to go into this whole thing too on, on defense, how we're going to move, how we're going to shift. That is, we go up. So now I'm going to go the other way, so you can see that side again. Catch on the outside, hook, up, and move. And I'm going to show one more variation. I'm just going to touch on this one real lightly. So if he's on mount, this one he's going to try to punch us first. So if he sits up the punch, I'm going to come up with, all you do is bear hug. Pull him back down. Now I'm safe from strikes. So when he's low, for him to hit me, all I'm doing is holding on. So when he wants to hit, the strikes aren't there. This basically now I'm going to decide which side I want to go to. So if I'm down, a lot of times I time enough. If he's going to punch with this and I feel him shift his weight up, all I'm going to do is hook. This goes into that same thing with this other arm. So when I catch, boom, I'm here. This hand actually helps guide me. And it's, you can see how it actually acts. 
as a control. So that's our first segment on grab length. So this would be a building point. Every time I'm going to show a different position, and then at the end, end of, the, of the four segments, I'm actually going to show a flow drop. So I'm going to show one, everything we go through the prior segments. Everything is going to connect. So I'm going to show you how to put this into a drill to mimic a little more of an actual flow, a little more of a fight. Um, again, we're going to start basic. This, I, I'm going to run the segments just like I do for class. We're going to start positional drills first, learn how to stay safe, how to protect ourselves, and then we're going to work into the actual striking parts, we're going to work into the uh, submission parts. Alright, again, my name is Grim Master Josh Schroeder with the Little Mount Tung Federation. Uh, back to you, Master Segura. Thank you, Master Trowbridge. That's an excellent drill. Our next segment is going to be Master Don Bazufi. He's going to share with us a philosophical story that you can share with your students about the philosophy of our art. Take it away, Master Bazufi. Hi, Kyosa Don Bazufi here. Master Sagara and I have been sharing philosophical tales for years, and he asked me to become part of Tung Su TV and share some of those stories with you. This week's story is called The Berry. It has a very powerful lesson in it. I hope you enjoy it. Once upon a time, in a land far away, a young martial arts warrior was traveling home from his martial arts training at the temple. As he was walking through the woods, reflecting on the lessons he learned that day, he heard a rustle in the bushes. A bear had caught his scent. With no other option, he decided to run. He ran as the bear chased him, and not paying attention, to where he was going, came upon the edge of a cliff. As the bear grew closer, he spotted a vine leading down the cliff face to safety. He climbed down the vine, but the angry growls of the bear attracted another wild predator at the bottom of the cliff, a tiger. Now with nowhere to go, the young warrior searched his thoughts for a plan. Just then, a pair of rats began gnawing on the vine. Unable to go up or down, and the vine about to break, the young warrior spotted a wild berry growing out of the cliff face. He reached out and plucked the berry and tasted it. And he thought to himself, how sweet. Thank you, Master Bazufi. That was an excellent story. Okay, and finally, a drill by yours truly. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so uh, today we're going to go over a, basic, a very basic kicking drill, but hang in there because the, the, the beautiful part about this drill is it teaches you a um, simple kicking method using the front leg that then allows for a lot more creativity um, once you get it down. So for beginners, they can just do the single version, and then the advanced students, you'll be able to appreciate what we're going to do with the advanced stuff shortly. So, uh, Mr. Peters, good? All good. right, so hands up, please. Actually, let's switch feet so we can go this way. All right, and I have to make sure that my microphone is clipped to both sides of my belt this time. All right, so first kick, we're going to slide up and front kick. Second kick, slide up, round kick. Third, slide up, hook kick. Fourth, slide up, inside out. Fifth, outside in. Sixth, 
side kick, seventh turn, back kick. Now I'm set to go with the other side and repeat the exercise. Now, you can also do this with two partners. So if I slide up front kick, he can return with a front leg front kick. Slide up, two, good. Then, round kick, round kick, hook kick, hook two. kick. And you can do the whole drill together like that, back and forth. So that's, beginners can do it against a static partner, intermediate, with the partner. You can also do it on uh, 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 mannequins if you have them. Uh, so if you're short a student, you can have one student with a mannequin. The next part of this is learning to scoot, hop, and jump. So from here, I extend the distance a little bit, and then I can practice scooting it with each kick, okay? Then I can practice picking up my front leg and pushing off my back leg with the same kicks. So you're here, and then you practice pushing off that way. Then, of course, you can practice jumping. Increase the distance, jump front kick, Okay, so have to be careful not to lose the mic, jump round kick, etc. Then, the next level of this is combinations. So, front, round. Round, round. We're going off the same order that we had before. Hook, round. Okay, inside out, round. Outside in, side kick. Side kick, hook kick, round kick. Back kick, Come back, pichagi with the opposite foot, same foot. So now you have combos that you can do and learn to throw in sparring with your front leg. Now, change feet, please. This comes in handy uh, for being creative. So now I have, from that exercise alone, here, side kick. I can go here, side kick, pichagi. Okay? How many kicks did I do on that one? Think for a second. Hopefully you caught it. Two, three, four. Okay? So you have these different combinations you can do off of this. Or you can just go boom, boom. Or boom, boom. Or here and here. So it's a very good, thank you. Yes, sir. Basic kicking drill that you can expand into many other uh, variations and really get your students to, you know, learn how to just float in with that uh, leg. What inspired me for this was uh, Grandmaster Huang Zhang Li. Uh, seeing him over the years in movies and then getting the opportunity to train with him a few times in person, uh, he's got a, a lead leg that just can go in any different crazy angle. When I first met him, he was in his 70s, and I said, uh, sir, what's your favorite kick? And he thought I said kicks. So he says, I'll show you. And he then hit me four times. And I saw the first two, the other four, I, the other two I couldn't tell you what they were because it was that fast, no exaggeration. And that made me think, you know, I, I thought of myself as a good kicker at that point, and now I realized that there's a whole nother level there that I wasn't even part of. So what the combination he did was he did Hadan Chagi, Yopodo Chagi, P Chagi, and Round Kick. And he did it so fast, it was like one, two, three, four, boom, 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 boom. So that made me think, how can I get my students to learn how to use their lead leg like that, that one leg to do all of that uh, attacks? And then I started playing around and I came up with this drill. But we had to reverse engineer it, start basic, and then allow them to work on the basics, then with jumping, then with scooting, and then from there, any kind of combination can go off of it. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Comment below. Okay, I hope you enjoyed those drills, and we will see you next week on Tangsudo TV. Please comment below, let us know what you think, and let us know what you like to see. Thank you for watching. Tangsudo.